Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 20th. I'm Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our uh, disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an, an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest and then we will jump into our, uh, our analysis. Okay, today I will talk about the stocks uh, which continue to gain yesterday and during the Asian morning today on China's uh, measures to contain the coronavirus. We'll talk about the FOMC minutes which were uh, released uh, yesterday. We'll talk about the pound uh, which shrugged off the better than expected CPIs from the UK. We also have the ECB minutes on the agenda today so I will analyze uh, those as well. We had a tumble in uh, Aussie despite the risk on sentiment, perhaps uh, due to Australia's uh, job data which came out on uh, during the Asian morning uh, today. I will talk about the Looney which was among the main gainers due to Canada's CPIs and with regards to the rest of the events, we get the US initial jobless claims for last week, we get the Energy Information Administration weekly report on uh, oil inventories, tonight we have the Japan's uh, national CPIs and we also have uh, one speaker on uh, our agenda. Now, as always, uh, let's start with uh, the dollar's performance against the other G10 currencies. We can see here that the dollar traded higher against most of uh, its uh, G10 peers on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. The main losers were the main losers were the yen, the pound, and the Aussie in that order, while the greenback underperformed somewhat against the uh, NOC and the Canadian dollar. Against the euro, uh, the dollar was found virtually unchanged. Now, the fact that the yen tumbled at the same time when gold continued gaining and the commodity linked uh, currencies Aussie and Kiwi slid. Uh, this provides confusing signals with uh, regards to the broader investor morale. However, looking uh, at the performance of the stock market, we see that uh, major EU and US indices were a sea of green with uh, the S&P and uh, Nasdaq hitting record closing highs as optimism surrounding China's efforts to contain the spreading of the coronavirus uh, grew further. The upbeat investor morale rolled over into the, Asia, the Asian session today as well with Australia's and New Zealand's markets hitting new record highs. In Japan, Nikkei Nikkei closed 0.34% uh, up, while China's Sh Shanghai Composite gained 1.84%. Now, investors' appetite uh, remained upbeat due to a report that uh, China is considering uh, to inject cash or proceed with mergers in order to bail out airlines hit by the virus. While another slowdown in coronavirus cases, this time accompanied by a slowdown in deaths as well, may have gave another reason for investors to increase uh, their risk exposure. The People's Bank of China cut in the benchmark lending rate today, although expected, uh, may have also been uh, pleasant news. Now, having said that, though, we'll maintain our uh, cautious stance despite uh, many equity indices hitting new records. We still believe that the deaths will not stay for long in slowdown territory and that uh, their, slowdown will their slowdown will stabilize uh, with a lack compared to the cases. Now, on top of that, with scientists uh, saying that the virus may spread even more easily than previously believed, we cannot rule out the number of infected cases or of infected cases to start accelerating again in the days to come. Yes, expectations that Chinese authorities will do whatever it takes to contain the virus may continue 
uh, to boost risk appetite, but what happens if additional measures prove uh, not to be enough? We believe that the risks here are, are asymmetrical. Further slowdown in, in infected cases may help equities to climb higher, but not at the same pace as before. On the other hand, just a headline suggesting that things have gotten out of control again may be enough to spook investors who could massively abandon, abandon risk assets and seek shelter in uh, safe havens. Tomorrow we will get uh, preliminary PMIs for February from several Eurozone nations and the bloc as a whole, as well as from the UK and the US. Market participants may be biting their nails in anticipation of uh, signals with regards to whether and to which extent the coronavirus has left marks on the global economic landscape. Now back to the currencies, uh, the greenback may have stood tall despite the risk on trading activity, perhaps aided by the minutes of the latest FOMC gathering. Those minutes revealed that policymakers were cautiously optimistic over their neutral stance, namely to keep interest rates unchanged for the whole year. Although they acknowledged the risks uh, the coronavirus poses to the economy, we have to recall that while testifying before Congress, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that it is too early to tell whether the impact uh, to the US economy will be severe or not. In our view, all this suggests that the Fed is very comfortable staying sidelined for now, but still, according to the Fed Fund Futures, investors are fully pricing in another quarter point decrease to be delivered in uh, September. Now flying from the US to the UK, yesterday we got the nation's CPI data for uh, January where the headline and core CPI rates uh, rose by more than anticipated. Specifically the headline rate climbed to 1.8% year over year from 1.3% while the forecast was for an increase to 1.6%. The core rate also exceeded its uh, forecast for an uptick to 1.5 from 1.4% and instead rose to 1.6% year over year. The pound gained at the time of uh, the release, perhaps as the data lessened the likelihood, uh, lessened the need for a Bank of England rate cut, especially following the resignation of Sajid Javid as finance minister, a move which triggered speculation for more, for more fiscal support. However, the British currency was quick to give, uh, to give up those gains and to trade even lower against its uh, US counterpart, perhaps as investors paid more attention to headlines surrounding uh, the Brexit transition period. Yesterday, a senior EU advisor said that the European Union will not give special treatment to the UK and it will determine its access to financial markets the same way it did for Japan and the US. It seems that both sides are heartening their stance with the EU demanding fair competition guarantees, while P Prime Minister Johnson's advisor uh, said that they will never abide to EU rules. Now, with Prime Minister Johnson insisting that any accord should be reached before the end of the year, and EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen noting that it is impossible for a deal to be agreed by then, the risk uh, for a disorderly exit at the end of uh, this year remains well on the table. Thus, despite data suggesting that there is little need for a Bank of England cut, the pound may be set for a bumpy ride with any rallies due to upbeat data, perhaps being offset by disagreements in the EU-UK talks. Now, as for today, GBP traders may pay close, uh, close attention to the UK retail sales for January. Headline sales are expected to have increased 0.5% uh, month over month after sliding 0.6% in December. That said, this will drive the year over year uh, rate down to 0.7% from 0.9%. The core rate is also forecast to have rebounded, specifically it is expected to have increased to 0.8% uh, month over month from minus 0.8%, but the year over year core rate uh, is anticipated to have slid as well to 0.4% year over year from 0.7%. The case for lower year-over-year -year, uh, rates is also supported by the BRC Retail Sales Monitor, the year-over-year -year, uh, rate of which declined to 0% from 1.7%. 
that said at this point we need to note that the BRC monitor is far from a reliable uh, gauge of the official retail sales prints taking data from uh, January 2011 the correlation between the BRC monitoring the official headline year over year rate is only 0 0.26 while its correlation with the core rate is also low at 0 0.29 in any case, despite the potential uh, slide in the year-over-year -year, uh, rates, a rebound in monthly terms could allow investors to push back the timing of when they expect a rate cut uh, to be delivered by the Bank of England. Something like that could prove supportive for the pound, but the negative sentiment surrounding the EU-UK negotiations may keep any gains limited and short-lived. Now, apart from the UK retail sales, today we also get the minutes from the latest ECB meeting. At that meeting, the bank kept its rates and, and guidance had changed. Thus, all the attention fell to the bank's strategic review, with uh, President Lagarde noting that the aim will be reviewed, as well as the bank's toolkit, toolkit and how inflation is measured. How we measure inflation is clearly something we need to look at, she noted. This will be key for market participants trying to figure out how the bank will act moving forward, as it may also result in a change in the inflation target. For example, officials could signal commitment to the 2% rate as most of the other major central banks, but this would mean more stimulus for hitting that goal, as any undershooting may not be dealt with the same tolerance as in the past. We will dig into the minutes uh, for further for further clues on that front, but given that uh, the review is expected to be completed in November, we don't expect market participants to start betting on further easing as early as in the next couple of months, only due to potentially dovish, dovish minutes, despite Lagarde adding that uh, the bank would stick to its uh, current policy for now, which means that uh, policy moves could still occur before a new strategy is adopted. We believe that investors will pay more attention to tomorrow's uh, PMIs as they are eager to find out whether and how much did the coronavirus impact uh, did the coronavirus impact the euro area economic uh, outlook. Now passing the ball to the Aussie and the Looney, the former was among uh, the losers despite the upbeat investor morale perhaps uh, taking a hit from Australia's employment report released overnight. The unemployment rate rose to 5.3% from 5.1% uh, instead of ticking up to 5.2% as the forecast suggested. The employment change revealed that the economy added uh, more jobs than anticipated, while the participation rate ticked up to 66.1% from 66% suggesting that the rise in the unemployment rate may have not been only due to bad reasons. It could also be due to more people uh, being encouraged to register for unemployment benefits and start seeking for a job. In any way, a rise uh, to 5.3% is not encouraging uh, news uh, for the RBA, the view of which is that the number that will start generating inflationary pressures is at 4.5%. Thus, a rising unemployment rate combined with slowing uh, real wage growth may have prompted market participants to bring forth their expectations with regards to another cut by this bank. Indeed, according to the, a to the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures implied yield curve, that timing was brought forth to August from uh, September yesterday. Now, yesterday, apart uh, from uh, the UK CPIs, we got inflation data from Canada as well. Both the headline and core rates increased by more than anticipated, which may allow Bank of Canada officials to stay away from the cut button for a while, especially following January's better than expected employment report. The loony gained at the time of the release, and today it was found in the second place among the G10 uh, currencies just behind uh, knock. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, from the US we get the initial jobless claims for last week and the Philly Fed manufacturing PMI for February. Initial jobless claims are expected to have increased somewhat to 210k from 205k the week before, 
while the Philly index is anticipated to have declined to 12 from uh, 17. The Energy Information Administration weekly report on crude oil inventories is also coming out and expectations are for a slowdown to 2.494 million barrels from 7.459 barrels, the million barrels the week before. That said, bearing in mind that uh, yesterday the American, the American Petroleum Institute report revealed a 4.2 million barrels inventory built, we see the risks surrounding the Energy Information Administration forecast as tilted to the upside. Now, as for tonight, uh, during the Asian Morning Friday, Japan releases its national CPIs uh, for uh, January. The headline rate is forecast to have ticked down to 0.7% year over year from 0.8% while the core one is anticipated to have ticked up to 0.8% from 0.7%. Now bearing in mind that both the headline and the core Tokyo CPIs for the month slid to 0.6% and 0.7% from 0.9 and 0.8 respectively, we view the risks surrounding the national forecasts as uh, tilted to the downside. At its uh, previous meeting, the Bank of Japan kept its ultra-loose uh, policy as well as its uh, guidance had changed, reiterating that it expects short and long-term interest rates to remain at their present or lower levels as long as it is necessary to pay close attention to the possibility that uh, the momentum towards achieving the price stability target will be lost. A slowdown in inflation combined with Monday's disappointing GDP prints may encourage investors uh, to add to bets with regards to additional easing. However, we believe that with little room to do for uh, with little room to do so, officials may prefer to wait for the picture to worsen significantly before they eventually decide to act. As for the yen, we don't expect a major reaction due to the CPIs. Given its uh, safe haven status, we expect it to stay hostage to developments surrounding the broader market sentiment, and especially to headlines surrounding the fast spreading coronavirus. Now, we also have one speaker on today's agenda, and this is ECB Vice President Luis de Quintos. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, tomorrow. For those who are interested in uh, learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at, uh, at uh, 08 uh, o'clock a.m. GMT time. So, goodbye everyone and have a great day.